Hi boys and girls, this is book number three and it's called Airmail to the Moon. I hope you like it. My name is Aura Mae Cotton of Crabapple Orchard and last night somebody stole my tooth. I'd been down at the creek catching crawdads when it started tingling. Kind of like you missed your toast and peanut butter and bit your teeth really hard instead. That was three weeks ago. I was popcorn in the pan excited. For sure that tooth was gonna fall out any second, but Dada, that's what I call my daddy, always says, not to milk the cow when she's asleep, which is crab apple orchard talk for not blabbing to everybody about something before you're sure what you're blabbing about. So I didn't tell a soul. Then last Monday, while fetching the mail at the county road, I stuck my tongue out at that pesky neighbor, Marietta Bean, and gave her a big raspberry like this. The vibration from my tongue flapping against my teeth popped that chomper of mine as loose as a goose on ice skates. So I told the world about my first tooth coming out, whether they wanted to hear it or not. By Thursday, that tooth was so wobbly, it was just hanging on by one root and a flap of skin. I could push it all the way out between my lips with my tongue and help Mama slop the hogs at the same time. Oreo, Mama said to me. Oreo's my nickname, just like the sweet cookie I am. Don't flap that tooth out when you're working. It reminds me of your cousin Cyrus just before he got braces. So I kept that tooth inside my mouth, worrying it like, a, like mad with my tongue. Then, Friday, right after my big brother Bo Dean and my little sister Kelsey Ann got into a fight at the dinner table over whether Arlene Peterson's pigs really kneel and pray before they eat, that loose tooth of mine fell right out of my mouth, plop, and landed right smack in the middle of my spaghetti. Mama said to be sure to put that tooth under my pillow. That way the tooth fairy would come and get it and give me some money. Money, shoot, howdy. Mama didn't say how much, but I figured it had to be at least a thousand dollars or maybe even a hundred dollars. I was so excited that I hurried to bed as quick as a dropped cat just so I could dream about all the things I was going to buy. But like I said, somebody stole my tooth, so I guess I dreamed all night for nothing. First thing this morning, when I discovered the crime, I ran lickety-split to find Mama. She was in the root cellar up to her elbows in rutabagas. Mama, I exploded, is the tooth fairy a crook like old Hester Jenkins that stole the parking meter from in front of the county courthouse? Mama jumped back, eyes as big as sausages. Why no, Oreo? The tooth fairy is as honest as flowers in the spring. That's what I thought, I fumed. Well, then somebody besides the tooth fairy stole my tooth. Somebody so crooked, they screw their socks on every morning. And when I catch them, I'm going to open up a can of gotcha and send them airmail to the moon. Mama looked at me real hard. Oreo, she said, I don't think anybody would steal your tooth. Maybe the tooth fairy is putting it on a string with the other teeth to make a beautiful necklace. That's what I've heard she does. She probably forgot to leave you some money and will remember tonight. That didn't seem likely to me. What good is a tooth fairy that forgets? Why don't you go ask your daddy, Mama suggested, seeing how upset I was. Maybe he knows something we don't. Aha, uh -huh, I thought. He's a real thinker, my dad is. Well, he even sells watermelon to the grocery store. He knows mighty near everything. I heard Dada before I spied him. He was out by the tire swing shaving and singing at the same time, which is mighty dangerous if you ask me. Half his face was shaving cream, the other half was as smooth as a baby's belly, as he liked to say. 
Dada, I yelled. Some crook stole my tooth, and when I catch him, I'm gonna open up a can of gotcha and send him airmail to the moon. Dad all looked at me real hard. Oreo, he said, I don't think anybody would steal your tooth. Maybe the tooth fairy has it and is grinding it up in a big machine. That tooth dust might come out as money. Then the tooth fairy could use it to buy some real estate. Like one of them condominiums at Miami Beach. Dada sauntered over to the back porch steps and sat down. He was thinking about the tooth fairy, money machines, and condominiums, I figured. It was a who'd have thought it to me. What would I do with the condominium at Miami Beach? Yeah, tooth dust, Dada said. Tooth dust? I, I kind of shouted. But Dada, somebody stole my tooth. Dada rubbed his chin and nodded. Why don't you go ask your brother? He usually knows more than he tells. Aha, I thought, heading for the barnyard. My brother Bo Dean is as ornery as a bull in a beehive, and he lost two teeth last week when he fell out of the hayloft. I'll bet he stole my tooth and glued it straight into his mouth. I'm going to get that boy, I vowed, and when I do, I'm going to open up a can of gotcha, and I'm going to send him airmail to the moon. I didn't steal your tooth, Oreo, Brother Board Bodine said calmly, crawling out from under the corn crib. What would I want with girl teeth anyway? They don't fit boys. I hadn't thought of that. Are you sure you didn't just give it to the tooth fairy? No money down. Why would I do such a thing? I demanded to know. That's stupid. Bo denied the hen house. He was looking for his pet snake fluff. The tooth fairy saves teeth to give them to babies, right, Oreo? Not according to Mama or Dada, she don't. Well, according to me, Bodine Cotton, she does. That's so they can chew on rocks and shoes and stuff. Bodine, you're ornery, I reminded him, talking about babies like that. Yep, he whispered as he snuck into the hen house door. But I'm right. Where do you think Sister Kelsey Ann got her teeth when she was little? Aha, uh -huh, I thought. Maybe Bodine has a point. Kelsey Ann is as ornery as Bodine plus ten. She had to be the one that stole my tooth. I'll get that little diddle do, I roared. The tooth fairy? Bodine asked, sticking his head out the chicken house, fluff in one hand. Scared hairy chickens squawking and flying everywhere. No, Kelsey Ann Cotton, I snapped. And when I do, I'm going to open up a can of gotcha and I'm going to send her airmail to the moon. Kelsey Ann Cotton, I yelled up at the backyard apple tree. Give me my tooth. I know you stole it. Pig feathers, she said, hanging upside down from her knees on a tree limb. I'm as sweet as roses in the snow. The tooth fairy steals teeth, not me. She makes them into doorknobs. Didn't you know that, Oreo? Not according to Mama, Dad, or Bodine, she doesn't. You took it, I shrieked. She does too, because I didn't, Kelsey Ann snapped. Does not, you did. Does too, I didn't. Does not, you did. Kelsey Ann giggled. I bet you threw it away, Oreo. It's probably in the bottom of the garbage can, stuck in the middle of a blob of leftover spaghetti. That's how forgetful you are. That tooth will never be a doorknob. That did it. I was so mad, I was ready to scream. Nobody really knew what the tooth fairy was up to. Nobody was a bit of help, and nobody was the lop-eared rascal that stole my tooth. I was just about to pop my cork clean out of my crab apple orchard. That's how mad I was. But instead, I just stood there looking at my upside down sister and I started crying. Loud and long big tears streaming down my face, tasting like salt. 
I didn't want to cry. I just couldn't stop. Now, we cottons banter, shout, squabble, and argue with one another a fair amount, just like any self-respecting family. But if it ever comes to a cotton ball and real tears of grief, the rest come a-running to help. Hey, ho, howdy, in a flash. Dada, Mam Mama, and Bodine, Kelsey Ann, and even my pesky little neighbor, Marietta Bean, were all at my side in five seconds flat. Somebody stole my tooth, I sobbed, crying harder than ever. And when I catch him, I'm gonna open up a can of gotcha and send him airmail to the moon. And I stuck my hands down deep in my pockets, trying to look like I meant it. My name is Orme Cotton of Crabapple Orchard. My face is hot, my toes are curling, and right now I feel like a possum up a plum tree. I'm as embarrassed as a zebra without its stripes. You see, there's this little hard thing in the bottom of my pants pocket. It's right where I left it. I wonder if the tooth fairy ever sends motor mouth kids like me airmail to the moon. Good night, boys and girls. I hope you enjoyed that book. See you tomorrow night.